If you're looking for an all-out, non-stop, gory action film, Boy Kills World is going to be for you. At least it might be for you. It could be for you. Is it for you? I'm going to talk about it in a spoiler-free review right now. Before I tell you why Boy Kills World might not necessarily be the action film you're looking for, I want to tell you about another story. A story that's really for everyone. The sponsor on this video is an awesome one. It's Storyiverse, an app you can download right now free of charge. There's a link in the description. Or you can go to the Apple Store or Google Play Store and check it out. This bad boy is going to be a marriage of reading and animation. Two powers coming together in a perfect harmony. It's really the future of reading. And I have to tell you, it's incredibly immersive to read a story and have it actually play out visually in front of you. It's one thing to imagine it in your head. It's another to see it animated, explosions, sound effects. It all sounds crisp. It all looks great. And since it's coming from different animators and writers, these story all have a unique feel to them. They look wildly different, yet they all retain that same level of quality you would expect. No evil AI overlords here. Lately, a lot of movies feel creatively bankrupt. So it's really great seeing an app like Storyverse come along with these offerings, champion creativity, and letting people check it out for free. So I highly recommend checking Storyverse out. And again, you can find a link right in the description below. Let's get down to business. Boy Kills World is everything I stated in the onset. It is a non-stop action film with a lot of gore. This movie is actually gorier than most horror films I see. It makes that new Abigail Vampire movie look like a tea party. The film stars one of those dreamy Skarsgård boys. Bill, he plays a character named Boy. This is what we do with movies now. We don't name them. We just give them boy, girl, whatever. There is a girl, too. Her name is June 27, played by Jessica Roth. She's from those Happy Death Day movies. Still looking fiery hot. Still looking great. But so does Bill. I will say the only negative with Bill is he's a tall drink of water. And this movie's very heavy with the combat. So some of his fluidity, not really that fluid. It's kind of like me. I'm, I'm a really tall, lengthy individual. So I have to do a bunch of martial arts. <laughs> No, actually, you know what? Never mind. I would be awesome at it. But he is a little cumbersome at times. So what can I see from the outside? What are the toppings of this film? Well, we have Boy. He's, he's pissed. It's a revenge movie at its heart, at its core. This is a kid who's watched the death of his family, and he's going to be raised by a shaman out in the woods. To be the most badass, fearsome warrior you could possibly imagine, this means letting go of his past, training by going into the mud, fighting hand to hand, doing some Rambo stuff, avoiding traps, setting traps, learning how to use a gun, learning how to detach himself from reality. And this is going to be a trickier thing for the boy than for most kids his age because he's both deaf and mute. It's a, it's a dangerous combination. All this done at the hands of an evil warlord played by Famke Jensen. That's right, my Jean Grey, my... My beautiful blushing Jean Grey is back. I haven't seen her in a long time, not since she had all the work done on her, and now her face looks like it was generated by AI. She's still, you know, kind of there. She's still kind of lovely, but it, it's just sad. It's sad when all that work gets done, and she's kind of hard to recognize anymore. It's, it's a far cry from the Jean Grey I remember in X-Men 1, 2, and 3. All right, sounds pretty basic on paper, Adam. What's the problem? Boy becomes a man. He's a killing machine. He's out for revenge. Seems pretty by the books. Well, it's far from that. Because he can't talk or hear, he has an inner monologue going at all times. This monologue's coming from none other than Archer, H. John Benjamin. That's right, Bob's Burgers is going to be acting as the voice for Bill Skarsgård. Because Bill, as a kid, or boy, I should say, grew up playing a cool video game with his sister, and that video game had the voice of... Archer, so he's going to use that going forward. And I will say it's it's fun, it's playful. This whole movie is very fun and playful, whimsical. It's 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 insane, it's asinine, it's shenanigans. It's hard to get too invested in anything because it's all so very silly. But contrasting that playfulness is the over the top violence and gore. This movie really feels like it was made by someone that grew up on Mortal Kombat and never really got out of that mindset. <laughs> so 
<laughs> everything from the kills. I mean, they even announced fatality at one point. But everything from the over-the-top violence to the way that they talk to each other is so juvenile. Some of the dialogue exchanges were really cringy to hear. I was rolling my eyes a few times. But as the movie played out, I was getting a bit more in tune with it, not caring so much about some of the lame dialogue and jokes, and just kind of having fun and going along with the ride. Now, the ride should have probably stopped about 15 minutes earlier. It does definitely go on too long. There are a lot of twists and turns that seem unnecessary and do bloat the film up and don't really bring much to the table in terms of why. It doesn't really change the journey at all. It just kind of becomes head scratching at the implausibility of it all. But let's get to why people are gonna see this and it's for the action, which thankfully there is a whole lot of it is very visceral. The camera is flying all around. Think of the new Roadhouse movie, but done far better. I thought the style of this moved way more elegantly with the characters. The choreography is nuts in this film. There's lots of hand-to-hand. -hand, there's lots of gunplay. The final fight goes on for a very long time. And I never wanted it to end even as it was getting more and more brutal with some of the things that were happening to our characters. There's a lot of blood, there's a lot of gore, there's some pretty tough things to look at from time to time, such as grabbing a cheese grater as a weapon. <laughs> I can offend this character. Now, while this is marketed as a Bill Skarsgård one-man vehicle, not quite the case. He's often paired with some Looney Tunes side supporting actors, one of which I really couldn't stand for like 85% of the film. He really got on my nerves, and I was really honestly just hoping he would die at some point. The movie has a very interesting soundtrack as well, kind of upbeat, poppy-esque. It worked. I thought it worked very well. Very off the beaten path type of music. But it, it, it's more interesting than, I guess, the kind of stock stuff we've been seeing in every other action movie. If you're looking for something different, this is definitely the movie for you. If you like movies that are quirky and think outside the bun, Boy Kills World definitely does that. Maybe to a fault. It's almost too zany for its own good. Oh, and also, Charlotte Oko plays in this, too. <laughs> this guy just keeps showing up in movies. I had no idea he was in Monkey Man, and now here he is again, playing yet another unique, fun villain. He's just, he doesn't miss. I want more Charlto. My overall takeaway, I enjoyed this more than I did it. It has a lot of problems. It's definitely not going to be for everyone. I like the quirky things, all right? I like the Scott Pilgrims and things of that nature. This is definitely not Scott Pilgrim. It's far dumber than that but it kind of enjoys that. It relishes its stupidity. It takes a sense of pride in its immaturity. And it straight up unapologetically steals the plot of Hunger Games, where they have the culling that takes place every year, where they just murder a couple people to send a message. It's, a, it's the Hunger Games. It's the same fucking thing. All right, well, there you have it. My thoughts on Boy Kills World. I want to hear from you now. Did you see the movie? I am a little bit late on this one. I got to a late, but, you know, whatever. I'm, gonna, I'm still going to put out a review for you, let you know whether it's worth your time. And based on what I said, hopefully that pushes you one way or the other. Maybe you think, okay, I like this kind of stuff. That sounds just like a film I'll be into. I'm going to see it in theaters. Otherwise, maybe tread lightly, wait till it comes out on streaming. Either way, not a bad watch. All right, let me know your thoughts. Please like the video. Subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie reviews every single week. Would love to have you stick around. And again, check out that sponsor, Storyverse. They're doing good stuff over there. All right, see you next time.